Alrighty, so um, got a Malinois? Yep. Retired police dog, is it? He's not a retired, his dad was a retired police dog. Gotcha. Okay. I, had, I was a, I'm a retired canine handler. I had three police dogs. Okay. This is the son of my master. Okay. And then what are we experiencing here? Um, he's good with me and my wife and my kids. Uh -huh. um, other people, he's just not, I don't know if we never socialized him enough at the beginning, but he's just not, he doesn't like other people. They come okay. in the yard, he gets mad. Um, tried to take him to a, a, a new kennel a couple weeks ago. Okay. And they bent down to put something around his neck and he bit the, bit the guy in the hand. Okay. I tried to pet him a couple months ago and he bit him on the wrist. Oh, wow. So. How old? Seven. Seven. Uh, and then where do you think this is coming from? They're, they seem to be, for me, from my experience, they seem to be more fear bites. He's never, we've never done anything, so he, he doesn't grip. He's, ne he's never seen uh -huh. a sleeve. He's never, he, we don't even play tuck sure. with him. Um, the only thing he plays with is tennis balls and, and Kong balls. Okay. Um, and you've had him, sorry, for how long? Seven years. Seven years. Yeah, since, oh, he, was, since, he, was, since he was a puppy, I've had him. Okay. Um, and throughout those seven years, like, what's his behavior been? He doesn't like people coming back by his kennel. So he's he's an outside dog. He's on a cable run. He's on a 70-foot cable run. Okay. So about 15 feet either side of that. Sure. And when people get close to that, he just uh, barks and... and wants him to go away. Sure. So he gets territorial. He's, he's snapped at a couple people. Yeah. Okay. So he's got two bites? Or does, is there more? Two bites and somehow he got off the line one day and bit a dog that was walking. By. Okay. This is in front of the property? Yeah. Okay. Territorial. Um, uh, when he had bitten that dog, uh, I'm assuming they were with their, their, their dog. They were, their, they were with their handler. Yeah. He, he bit him and then ran back into the yard. Gotcha. So it wasn't a dog fight. Yeah. It was you know, hit and run. Yeah, he, he bite, and, and I've been with him the two times he's bit people, and it's been. Out. And were they puncture bites or like like just one one was. Okay. Yeah. Um. Uh, multiple or is it no. just like a just clean? Yeah. But uh, I mean, in terms of the teeth, was it just like a canine got puncture or like like was it a minor? Can both canine. Both canine. Okay. Yeah. Um. And then what are you like, trying to establish with them here, like in terms of the behavioral stuff? I don't want him to be an asshole. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want him to be. I don't want him to bite people. I don't want. I don't want to have to worry about him biting people. I don't want to have to worry about. We've got new neighbors. I don't want to have to worry about their kids coming into the yard. And, okay. And getting bit. Okay. Have you done anything from your experience, just like to, to work with them? Only thing we've only thing we've ever done is is just um, obedience. Okay. Um, I about wigged out coming in here. We've, we don't, we've never been around this many people. Okay. I've never been around this many people with them. Sure. Um, when we walk, there's somebody walking towards us on the sidewalk, we go out and, and go around. Them. Sure. Because I'm a trusted. Sure. And I'm, I, I don't want there to be, you know, uh, another incident. Correct. Okay. So. Um, so aside from not being an asshole, uh, control-wise, like, how much control are you trying to get with this guy? He listens. Uh-huh. Ritter. Ritter. Sit. And how long will he hold that? Until he decides not to. Okay. Minute or, minute or two. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So that so that's one thing we'd have to address, is that it's it's sit until I release you. Okay. So if it's like a thirty minute sit, which is not realistic in my book, mm -hmm. it's it's a thirty minute. You keep your butt down. Okay. Okay. Um, when it comes to the behavioral stuff, um, like, yeah. Because I see here, and this might just be Malinois, is that just kind of anxious energy? Um, so if I'm remembering everything correctly here, we have got off the line, quick hit and run with yeah. a passerby, uh, at a, at a kennel facility, somebody was trying to like leash him up or something and was yeah. in his personal space. Yep. And then there was your dad. My dad, my, he had already gone over and sniffed my dad and then came back by me and my dad came over to pet him and, mm. and he just sat there. He, he wasn't, I should know now about what it, because it was just go really ears down just still and that's it. Ah, sure, sure, so sure. So he's not he's not he's not going pie low, he's not growling, he's not doing any of that. He just is is really t quiet and then bam. Gotcha. Um and all those were within the past 
Uh, since the summer. Since the summer. Yeah. Okay. So one one in July, one in August. Okay. Because the, and then like so there was the resource guarding with like the, the kennel and stuff. Uh, was it just like you had he had never had the opportunity to during he, the like previous? He had never been. That was the that was the first time we had been to that kennel, the normal kennel I go to. So they love him and he loves them. Get out of the car there and he's just like. Ah. Has he been there since he was a puppy? Yeah. Okay, probably why. Yeah. They go there and, and they come out and right there and he's like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. So when it comes to like the old daycare and stuff, because most likely he's been going there since he was a young pup, mm -hmm. they're in his circle of trust, so to speak. Um, one, one thing I didn't say, that's. I got a double. I got, oh, I, I think got, I read that. Yeah. I got a, I got a Muslim, and he still tries to go at him. Mm -hmm. You know, he expresses his anal glands. Oh yeah. He starts there. He starts growling like like I've never heard before. Okay. So but that's the only it's the only time he's ever done that is we go to the vet and he's fine until we walk in the door and then it's going back to your dad. Mm -hmm. Had was this his first time meeting him? No. He's met him several times. And then just this one particular time. Mm -hmm. uh, was this... my, my dad's 80. Sure. You know, so. Had he entered the home? No, this is outside. This is outside. He's an, he's an outside dog. He comes in the house when I'm baking and my wife's not around. And in the, my wife, we've got hardwood floors and my wife's like, he can't come in the house. So mm. he's an outside dog. When it gets really cold in the winter, bring him into the garage. garage is gotcha. Okay. Um, that's good to know. The issue with, with dogs being outside is there's, uh, they're, they're, um, king of the castle, so to speak, because he can, if there's peers, people walking by or whatever, and he yeah. can just run up and down the line barking, yeah. that he's practicing a lot of that behavior, and it's yeah. like every time I see a person, this is what happens. Yeah. And also not being around people a whole lot, um, uh, antisocial, you know. Yeah. Um, there's things that we can do. The only issue is, in my experience, I would bring him into the home. And if that doesn't seem like an option for him, mm -hmm. uh, it would, if we move forward, it would be, because we can stop and control things. Mm -hmm. But the issue is if he's not like used to just being around people in social interaction, he, mm -hmm. he becomes a dog that does not know how to interact. Mm -hmm. And then if he's for... And, and the, quite honestly, that nails it. He doesn't know how to interact. Yeah. He doesn't, he doesn't know how to interact with other dogs. He's not. He's never been around other dogs. With my police dogs, the only time we would socialize them with other dogs is other police dogs and making sure that they didn't break break down. Correct. And so with him, the only dog he was ever socialized was his dad, and he died after two years. Mm. Yeah. yeah. They got along fine. Um, so, I mean, it's the time he was a puppy. And they, they had he no grew problem. up with them. But yeah, he grew up with them. Yeah. yeah. Uh, he died six years ago, seven years, five years ago. Yeah, so all that, there's like a lot of, you know, like just all that nonsense all day, and then, and and then, it's more so he's making decisions. Oh, there's something, I'm going to bark at it. Oh, there's something, I'm going to chase it, or I'm going to pursue it, this and that, where he's making all these decisions, and then it's like, hey, I want to pet you, and he's like, I'm, I'm going to make the decision that, no, you're not going to pet me. Okay. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it does. So, because typically what happens, well, in my case, is it's typically an in-home dog, who is displaying this kind of behavior. So then the owner withdraws because um, they don't want liability. Uh, so then it just makes it worse because now the dog is being withdrawn, doesn't learn how to, it's not being kept in the social space. Mm -hmm. But then also if the owner tries to push things but doesn't have the tools to do it correctly, that also doesn't help them. And, and I know how to out a dog. I know how to get him to get a good grip. I know how to track. I'm not even done with it. The three police dogs I had were all socialists as I'll get out, you know. Mm -hmm. They could bite somebody and two minutes later, you know, one of the other officers could come over and pet him no problem. He'd be like, oh, <laughs> But this this guy, you know, the one who, who's never seen a sleeve, never seen a tug, never never done any of that, he's the one who I, I have to worry about the most bite. Uh-huh. Okay. Um so the way this is gonna be interesting because you have a, a solid background. Um, is I, I'll explain how all this works. Sure. Um, I'm assuming you did research on how we train. We use prong and e collar. Mm -hmm. 
primarily uh, e-collar, we sometimes incorporate prong. Okay. So the issue I have with prong is, um, let's say a dog does act out reactivity and stuff, you can give them your harshest correction and they could bypass it and still blow up and be reactive, right? Because yeah. we cannot match the intensity. Yeah. Uh, more often than not, we don't have that with e-collar. Every now and then I'll get an extreme case where it's just they're the one in a you know thousand dogs or whatever, that I'm like, okay, this dog's a bit different. Um, but as long as the owner's willing to go there, mm -hmm. meaning in terms of the pressure, the amount of pressure needed to get the dog to cut the behavior, mm -hmm. we can get results. Okay. And that's and that's and that's the thing that I don't know how to cut that behavior. I mean, I can't have them going around biting people and correcting them. What do you mean? Like, do you mean the bite itself is a correction, or him biting but you correct him? Me, me correcting him. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Like, because he has to bite someone in order to correct him. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah, so that's why we have the bite suit. So in protection training, we're like reverse. Mm -hmm. In protection training, you know, it's, um, we build the agitation, we get the harness, we're building the confidence, we build the lunging and the barking, right, until we get the bite. Uh, and then we develop the bite, and then we move to, like, the sleeve, to the suit and all that stuff, is we're the opposite. Is I come in with the bite suit, and it's like, come at me, bro. And then we correct all the biting. Okay. But the dog doesn't know that the suit's not a part of me. Okay. So it's actually a good thing that he doesn't know any. When when I when I retired my last dog, I didn't want there to be, and, and even with him, I, I quit playing tug and stuff with him. I, I, I played tug with a towel, but no juke, no nothing, no sleeves, no anything. Mm -hmm. Because I, I still had a couple kids at home, and he had, I'd never seen any, there's never been any aggression towards the kids or family members, even with him. But it's, I, I didn't want that liability. Sure. Going, going forward. Sure. Before it was on the city. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, on me, I don't want that. Correct. Yeah. So here, the way we go about this is uh, we can do one of two approaches. Okay. Run approach is, uh, have you done remote work at all, e-collar? Um, do you remember like how, the, how you layered it in or how you would layer it in with the dog? I, I don't understand that. Like when you would teach e-collar, like let's say you're going to train a dog like the heel on the e-collar. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how you would go about it? What, what we would do the first, to, to teach him basically what the e-collar is, was we just let him roam, put the e-collar on him, just let him roam. Tell him to come, and come, 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 until he got here, and then like, and then we like build the simulation. Gotcha. So were you doing like a continuous? Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Or, or if he was coming, we'd, we'd off it until he started to veer away. Then come, you know, then give him another come, and as soon as he was right here, good boy, good boy, good boy. Okay. Yeah. Do you remember how you would teach the heel? Um, we taught heel with a tennis ball right here. Gotcha. Okay. So it's going to be different. The, yeah, the, the only the only thing that we ever taught with with um, the e collar was recall and out, and um, that's basically about it. Gotcha. Does he have drive at all? Ball drive or anything? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He, he Just likes balls. He's never he's never seen it. He'll go work a pattern on a car. A drug. Oh pattern. sure. Yeah. He's never seen that. Uh -huh. Never seen it before. But he'll go up to a car and start sniffing the wells. Start sniffing the scene. I'm like, dude, you gotta do <laughs> I don't have to teach anything. All we gotta do is put some dope out, and you're good. Yeah. Yeah. So he's he's he had, he's never seen that. It just cracks me up if he does that. Okay. But yeah, he's he's got he's got ball drive. Okay. Uh, not that like. Um, so the reason why I asked about that is the way we train is is different mm -hmm. than most trainers. Okay. Typically, it's. Um, uh, a lot of trainers start with the food stuff, and then they, if they're going to use pressure, I've they'll never done food. okay. They'll use like prong, mm -hmm. and then they'll go to e collar, and I just jump into remote. Okay. okay? I teach everything using pressure. Uh, we don't need to have any kind of reinforcer. Okay. Okay. So it the the, the the concept of pressure on and pressure off, like you said, come and then uh, either when the dog is turning, and once they start coming to you, we take off that pressure, let let them know that is correct, okay. or when they're all the way here, we take off the pressure, okay. right? There's different, everybody has their own approach. Mm -hmm. So when we, when we teach the e-collar, um, what I, ha what I, I, I have what I call um, uh, connection, perception, and working. Perception level, or connection level, I'm sorry, is when you see the twitch, but the dog is not responding. So like if he's staring at a ball and you see this happening, mm -hmm. 
and he's unfazed by it, we know we have connection, yeah. but he's so focused on the ball, forget yeah. about it. Perception would be when you see the twitch and the dog's kind of like, what's going on, but still focus on the ball. Mm -hmm. Working level would be the twitch and the dog goes, whoa, and they kind of disengage from like, there's something more important than the ball right now, yeah. okay? They kind of recall. So, yeah. So like, we shape, I help find the working number. We would teach heel without a ball, completely, um, uh, it, it, does he have a heel just from the prong work that you've done? So he's got some foundation of it? Okay. He does, he likes to forge a little bit. He'll walk good with it. Uh -huh. you know, I, I take him out every morning for a two hour walk, or a two mile walk, I, would, I wish it was two hours. Sure. But he'll, he'll do a two mile walk with me. I, I just have him on the prong, this lead, and he's good. Sure. So like here, you see how you walked up and you have your leash short? And I understand that for liability issues and all that stuff and what we have at the moment. I just don't trust you. Yes. And that's, yeah. Is getting him to the point where you could have a slack leash and you're not worried about like, is yeah. he gonna lunge out? Yeah. Okay. Um, earlier when we talked about, you know, give him the sit, well, how long we hold that for? About two minutes until you find something else to do, right? We don't want any of that uh, questioning when it comes to the obedience. Okay. So it's not the obedience that's gonna help us. It's the discipline behind it. Okay. It's technically the caution of, I don't want the collar to go off. Okay. okay? Um, when we, so that the, the first approach is we do heel in my style of training of how we layer in pressure. And I see how does that impact the dog? Okay. Uh, it doesn't look like he has any kind of reactivity on like, at least when you walk with him on a leash from what I've seen so far, what do you say? Not really, as far as like other people? Or like walking around dogs and stuff like that. Like I've seen yeah. interest yeah. and like he'll peek, but yeah. he's not like, Becoming not, defensive. He, he, doesn't, he doesn't run at him. He doesn't, yeah. Okay, so he minds his business. For the most part, yeah. Unless they come into his personal space. Yeah. Okay, that makes sense. Um, so, when we put pressure on a dog, it makes them worry about the collar more than they do about what's happening. Okay, so let's say we did heal with him for a couple of classes just to get the foundation down. And then I come in with my sleeve or my suit or whatever, mm -hmm. and I touch him and he doesn't do anything. And then you think, you would say like, oh, it's a guarantee he would try to bite you before. Mm -hmm. People always go like, why did that, why did he not do anything? Or why did the dog not do anything? I go, because now the dog has something else to be concerned about than the pressure of me coming into the personal space. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's like, you know, with, with, um, with humans, we have confrontational pressure. Yeah. So when you come in close, it gets more uncomfortable, right? Because now you're instigating a fight. Mm -hmm. Same thing for the dog. So if I come into his personal space to pet him, he might be perceiving that as confrontation. So then the brain goes into back off. Yeah. But he's not really wanting the confrontation because it's a bite release, because yeah. he's it's like he, he's over a threshold, yeah. right? So by teaching him, put it, by putting him under an indirect stressor that's more stressful to get him to forget about all this other stuff, and then I come in and I pet him and he doesn't do anything, mm -hmm. That's because he has something greater to relate to. Okay. Does it make sense? Yep, makes sense. The other approach is I just come in raw. The dog has had no e-collar work. He's got the e-collar on and I just go to press him and I touch him. And he starts to flip out and like, you know, express his anal glands and flip out and bite and all that stuff. And I use the e-collar to actually shut all that down. Mm -hmm. So you can use the remote collar to turn off a dog in a flight or fear state or aggression state. Mm -hmm. It just has to... So what happens is if I go in and I make contact with him and he's fear biting or whatever, and I'm correcting him and I'm slowly going up on the collar until I find a number that backs him down. Yeah. And then I keep touching him, but he's not biting me anymore. And then I take off the pressure and I walk away. Okay. Okay. And then I come back in again and I pet him. He starts biting, I tap him on the collar. He stops, I keep petting him, nothing happens. I back off of him, take the pressure off, come back in. So just a question with that. When the pressure comes off, is there any sort of reward no. No, no 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 so the reason why we don't do that okay. is a passive dog is a thinking dog okay okay the e-collar when done correctly settles dogs down okay so our thing is good right yeah. and now you're stimulating the brain over stimulation exactly then leads into okay okay, okay. so it goes against everything that I've exactly ever, ever it's, it's completely <laughs> but it's because you're building drive yeah. you're you're sh but we're not doing obedience we're not doing bite this person on command we're not doing pursue this criminal, we're doing behave yourself, right? So it's, it's opposite. So when I come in and I do a lot of stuff, 
But a lot of my clients come from other trainers. And they're like, well, that's not what I was taught. And I go, I understand, but I was like, but if it worked, we wouldn't be here. Yeah. Right? Exactly. Yeah. So it's a different psychology because we're doing behavioral work. Mm -hmm. Now, if you came to me and said, hey, Jesse, I want to train this dog to be a protection dog. Yeah. All that stuff you just talked about would come into play. Yeah. You know, we'd put a harness on them. You'd be holding them. I'd come out, start doing all that defensive stuff, mm -hmm. get the dog agitated. Yes, good boy. Build him up, right? Come at him. He jumps and bites at me. Release him. Like, oh, yeah, because we're building the behavior. Mm -hmm. Here, we're wanting to shut it down. But he has to do it on his own. He has to do it on his own. Mm -hmm. So in order for a dog to learn how to self-regulate, they have to have like no variables in play. Okay. okay, so like super common, a dog is reactive, and we have a dog behind us, just here. Uh, super common when the dog is reactive, most trainers will tell my clients or tell their, tra their clients, say no and then correct the dog. Yeah. But now we have acute behavior. So technically speaking, the dog can perform the behavior until he hears the word no. Because mm -hmm. as a human, we're thinking, like if you tell a kid, do not take things that are not yours, a child or a person could just... Can, can, get, can get that. Exactly. I don't, I don't speak dog. Correct. So in order for him to learn, if I bite someone mm -hmm. and I shouldn't do it again, if that happened, he said no and corrected him, he's like, well, I can bite until I hear no. And what we want him to think is, if I think about putting my mouth on someone, I'm just, there's gonna be a correction. And if I wanna avoid the correction, cause there's no warning, mm -hmm. I just don't perform okay. the behavior, okay? okay? Mm -hmm. Now the hard part here is, cause you're like, I don't want my dog to be an asshole, <laughs> right? Is I really don't think he's an asshole. I, I don't think he is either. I just, I'm at the point where I don't trust him. Sure, you know. And I was always taught, trust your dog if he's a trustworthy dog. And he's not been trustworthy around other people. And am I doing some of it? I, I guarantee I am. But I just don't know where to go with it. Hence, we reach out. Sure. So how we approach this is I, I usually just kind of go by feel. Like once I show up, I'm like, all right, this is what we're going to do. Um, is we have to teach them how to handle pressure. Okay. We have to correct the behavior, so we got the sleeve, the suit, whatever, so I can come in and pet him and all that stuff. Yeah. Now, the issue here is if you're wanting to be able to have him interact with people and not worry about his behavior, you can't keep him and continue to keep him in the yard where he's not around people 98% of the time. Yeah. Right? Is that's why I was like, that's the hard part. Because it's not like, do whatever you want all day, but then when I bring my dad over, or if I bring you over to a facility, behave yourself. Because mm -hmm. he's thinking, well, I just do what I want all day. Yeah. Does that make sense? So that's the hardest part of the equation here, is that fact that he's an outside dog, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so, two classes are gonna be on heel for sure. We're gonna put a class on pressure. We could do a class on how to socialize them, um, in my book, correctly. Uh, how to introduce him to people, which would require him to be muzzle conditioned if he's not yeah. so already. Um, and then the rest is we play it by ear, okay? So, because the way I approach things is you, you have your problem, you're having what you're wanting and needing, right? I see the dog and I see the issue and I go, okay, at minimum, this is what we need. And then there's, if you want more, okay? At minimum, I would do like six classes here, two on the heel, one on one or one on pressure work, touching him and all that stuff, um, and that actually how he how he takes the pressure is really a big defining factor. He's not a hard dog. I've had hard dogs. Uh -huh. He's not a hard dog. Um, he's more soft. Um, so the pressure, I don't I, I don't think it's going to take a lot. But I just, I just, to to provoke him, not to provoke him, but for him to back down. Oh sure, okay. yeah, I got you. So, I, I, I had a, I had one of those one in a thousand dogs that didn't that would shit the table and continue the bite when he was on a e <laughs> and it was just like it's, it's, yeah he was a Dutch Shepherd though so, yeah so he's he didn't, I don't think he had any brains anyway so sure they're wiry yes they are um so okay. the third one you know for doing the pressure by the third class if not the first class because I have to decide how I want to approach it um it's kind of like what defines things. You know, um, like I have a fear aggression case right now. Um, been working with them for a while, and before I could even walk up, and she'd be blowing up and like flipping out. 
And then it's just been slowly, like before, like anytime I touched her anal glands expressed shitting it by the end of class, always, you know, crapping, whatever. So now we can put her in a lot of pressure and she's like completely fine. She's just still a big, she's still a jerk. And then because to socializing a dog like that is difficult because now they have to find volunteers. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So here, that third, whenever we put the pressure on the dog, that really just kind of tells me like, okay, this is what, this is how we're going to approach this. How he responds to the pressure. Because dogs can be high fear, low aggression, mm -hmm. low fear, high aggression, and anywhere in between. And that's what I got to figure out. Yeah. Okay. If all, if that, if it's not as bad as I, as, um, as I, I, as I think it is, um, cause I don't think this is like, cause if it was like a problem problem, like it would have been all seven years. It's like, I can't bring this dog near anybody. He's, well, and, and that's part of it is we just said, don't go by Ritter. He's not, you know, he's like a big, you know, we had people come over. We had a, uh, an exchange student who came in and she was good from, from go. And that was four or five years ago. So she, and she was fine with them. Sure. She'd walk with them and we'd walk together and. She didn't have any problem, probably pissed on her the first time, but other than that, he was good. <laughs> sure. Is he fixed or? Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's not happy about that either. <laughs> uh, yeah, so with, with six, it would be two on the heel, one or two on pressure, uh, socialization exercise, leaving six as a variable. Because I'm really just pushing the behavioral stuff. If you did longer, like, on, so we have three, six, nine, and 12 week programs, you're at six, nine, or 12, six at minimum. 9 and 12 is just like, if there were to be a bigger behavioral issue that's just taking me more time to resolve, or um, you're wanting more control over him. So like, if, you, if, you tell him to, if I tell my dog to down, she's not going to move for four hours. I just want him to come on his call. And I, recall, I, okay. I could, I could care less if he sits pretty. I could care less if he, if he downs and, and he's pretty. I'm not worried about it. Correct. I just want him, when I call him, come. I have to call him usually three or four times when he's over eating grass. He's part he's part Holstein. He likes grass. Mm -hmm. um, but other than that, you know, I just go we, dog sniffing, doing dog stuff. Sure. So I just want him. To, I just want him to come. I'm not so much the heel. Yes, absolutely. C care less about the down. Care less about any, any of that stuff. I'm not trying to have uh, a. Uh, KMPD dog or, or shit yeah 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 which is family pet yeah, yeah. and you just, just not want to have to worry dog. exactly hey. so just so that for for your personal reference more control is just so that you have more options available to okay. you I'm the same way mm -hmm. I don't care about the aesthetics because a lot of trainers push that I care about the function and I care about is a dog a good dog mm -hmm. right um, so if it's we're gonna have people over and we don't wanna to have to worry about him wandering around with people, but we need to expose him. You know, like it, it gives you an option for like, he can be in the setting, mm -hmm. but not have to be loose. Yeah. I don't care what we cover at the end of the day. I would say the six at least is so that we can just get that problem down. Yeah. Um, there's space for the recall within those six, pending how he does with the exercises. Mm -hmm. That's what I don't know. Okay. okay? Cause I, because from what you've told me and just my experience with like working with these cases, I'm going, all right, yeah, we know there's there's some fear there. Um, but I get clients who've had their dogs for five years and the entire five years it's been issue after issue after issue. Yeah. And they just couldn't find someone to help them. Yeah. You know? And here we're going, well in the past in the past year we've had two incidents. Yeah. You know, other than the resource guarding of the kennel, which is common. Yeah. That's an easy fix. Um, and he, and if people mind their own business, he minds his own business. Like that's actually pretty good. Um, food aggression, if I try to go in, he'll sit, I'll put the food out for him, he'll hold the sit until I tell him that he's free. But if I were to put my hand in there, he'd, he'd snarl and snap it. Correct. Yeah. Um, Is that something you wanted to address? Not so much at this, at this point. Okay. I, I, maybe, maybe down the road, but I, I just want to get the... If you're aggression stop. Okay. Um, so at minimum six, if you want a little bit more of a window, you could do nine. Uh, I think 12 would be overkill. Okay. From what I'm hearing from you. Question? Hmm? Question? Sure. Question? No. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. Um, 
Yeah, I think 12 would be overkill unless you knew like, yeah, actually I'd like to have more control just to have options available. Okay. And obviously you haven't seen them I'm just here sitting with you, but what, what, I'm, not a, I'm not adverse to, and I don't want to call us paying them and leaving them with you for the, like, the week that you have. Oh, you're talking about like for a boarding train? Yeah. Yeah. So here, uh, the issue with the boarding train is he'd have to come pre-muzzle condition because it's towards people. Uh, otherwise, that just puts my staff at risk. Yeah. Uh, but we may not see any of the issues you're, you're dealing with. Okay. 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 It happens. Um, uh, we can usually tell because, um, like, we have a, a dog right now who's just like is one of those dogs where it's just he's been a problem. And um, sure, and we told the lady same thing. Like, you know, we, any dog that's got any human issues, we always tell him pre-muzzle condition them. So that this way, when you bring him in, because he doesn't know the staff, he's being left somewhere completely yeah. foreign to him. Uh, we're not worried about, is he going to attempt to bite the staff or whatever? Because uh, I have staff at different levels. I got staff that's been with me for a couple of years. I got staff that's been with me for a couple of months. Yeah. Um, but it's all about you. Because you have the confidence stuff. Mm -hmm. You have the confidence issues with, like, I don't trust my dog. Yeah. And it's more beneficial to you to do the work yourself do the work see what's going on so we can try to learn all the stuff exactly see why it's working troubleshoot it later if it needs be because yeah. since you have a background as well when you get your dog you you can't help but that background to kick in mm -hmm. as opposed to like okay I have this background and i'm working with jesse and yes we're com we're on different ends of the spectrum but i understand and see why this is happening mm -hmm. plus you see the progress and you're doing it yourself so then you're like you as a handler right because it's not just your dog yeah. like it, it's you as well Plus, um, uh, you know, he's going to be more likely to be defensive if I approach him in your personal space because now he's thinking he might have to protect you as well, mm -hmm. you know, just instinctively. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, I would, could you do a board and train? Yes. I don't recommend recommend okay. it for you. Okay. okay. And I make more, more money off a board and train, just so you know. That's all. <laughs> I, so. I, 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 I'm not saying I'm not worried about money, but... I don't want to have to do anything drastic. Sure. I am, I've spent money on dogs before. I, we never had to buy anything for our dogs when we were in canine, but we, we all did. Mm -hmm. You know, so I'm not worried about spending money. To, sure. To do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like no. He's, he's the, family. Yeah, the way I, I, I look at it, is, the reason I say that is, unfortunately, because boarding trains are easy money for everybody. Mm -hmm. A lot of people push it, and then the owners suffer because it's either not a good quality board and train or they don't know what their dog learned and how they learned it. And, and it's like buying, it's like buying a, a, a dog that's been pre-trained yep. and going and working with it for a day and then yep. they say, here's your dope aggression and tracking dog, have at it. Yeah. And then you're like, what do I do? And, and I've seen plenty of those. And yes. They, they may be good dogs, but the handler has no idea what to do. Correct. Okay. So okay. here. Gotcha. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather you be educated because this is a different realm like what you just said earlier you're like with the whole ball and drive thing you're like that's completely opposite like the praise yeah. you're like that's completely opposite of what we would do yeah. so I could give you your dog back but you're going to apply everything you know from before thinking that that's probably what we gonna, did and then it's going to be worse because he's going to be confused correct yeah. okay. okay so uh, the, the, the pro to the doing it yourself is you learn so much more okay it's all hands on it's you working with your dog you're there you're seeing what's happening we're doing it together. Okay. Um, the con is it just takes a little, a little bit longer, okay? Because I see you for once a week. The good thing is you have a great foundation to build off of. So a lot of this stuff is just going to make sense. To, it should yeah. just make sense to you, okay. as opposed to the average dog person who has no look of understanding of dog behavior, and they have to just learn all this stuff like yeah. real time, okay? So uh, just for your your frame of reference, the six classes is like a thousand. Okay. Nine is like thirteen seventy five ish, I believe. And then 12 is like 1725, I believe. It's all on the website. Okay. Uh, the collar I would put them on is the Dogs for Black Edition, which is meant for 70 pound dogs and over. Uh, it's the highest output collar there is. The reason for the output is just in case, yeah. okay? Yeah. So like I could put on my eight pound Chihuahua, he's perfectly fine. Um, I'm not sure what the collars you use, but ours, we use Dogs it has 127 levels. Oh yeah, I'm trying to remember. I don't know, I, I used to wear one on my belt that wasn't a dog truck. Um, Sport dog, pet safe, no, e-car technologies. No, it, was, it was a hunting one. A hunting one, yeah. Maybe the sport dog. They usually only have like seven. This one had, you had, you had five settings, low, medium, high. So 
Yeah. 15. 15 levels, yeah. So the, the difference is, think of 15 and 127 is the same. Yeah. We just have 112 more divisions. Okay. So it's much more fine-tuned. Uh, also, the output is different because there's a low, medium, high output collars. Okay. So like my Chihuahua's collar, meant for a dog, you know, 15 pounds and under, I might have to be like at 80 on that collar for my pit to even feel it. Yeah. You know, because it's a low output collar. Uh, so it's not we come in and just jack it up high. We start low. We work our way up. We condition the dog and everything like that. Okay. Even if I'm coming in to push the behavior, we always start down low because people usually assume like, oh, if you're fixing aggression, you're probably just maxing out the collar, right? And they'll know. Like, like we don't come want to in. Max out the collar right <laughs> yeah, I'm like, we just come in uh, and we just come in, put the dog under pressure and see what is going to get him to de-escalate. What's mm -hmm. going to get him to like, just turn off. Okay. okay? Um, the socialization exercise uh, would require him to be muzzle conditioned because we would need to expose him to people. And then if people are, are aware of like what's going on. Muzzle conditioned, you're talking just that he can wear a muzzle. Correct. Not. And not find it. Yep. Okay. Is he conditioned already? So, semi. Okay. But the only time we put it on him is, I, I mean, I, for the vet. I can start putting it on him and taking him for walks, with him, and that won't be an issue. Yeah. The style that we use is Baskerville. Okay. It's a basket style muzzle, okay. unless you want to get like a Jafco or something, that's up to you. Okay. Um, cause just because a dog can eat, breathe, and pant normally, take food, okay. uh, drink water. Baskerville. Okay. Yeah. So you can get them on Amazon, and Maria can send you this information as well. Sure. But Basker, like baskets, but with mm -hmm. an R, Baskerville. Um, he's probably. A size four uh, usually what people will do is get like size three four and five and then return to ones that they don't need mm -hmm. uh, but yeah just have them start walking with the muzzle on you know feeding them through the muzzle and all that stuff we have a training resources page on my website under the FAQ section okay. that has some muzzle condition videos as well okay. and I would start that process if you have a muzzle at home you start with that muzzle until you get your correct okay. muzzle and just continue to do it even if he seems perfectly fine continue to do it because the issue with the muzzle is the muzzle is a stressor the e collar is a stressor. People coming into his personal space is a stressor. So we got three stressors going on at one time. Mm -hmm. Okay, is conditioning the dog with the muzzle and everything just helps remove one less thing for the dog to think about. So then we just have the person and then the e collar. Okay, because I've had dogs tear off dew claws. I've had dogs tear up their faces. You know, rip off the muzzle and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, it just makes it easier for everybody. Just, it's an easy process. You do it with food. Walk them with it. Have more around the house or whatever with it on. Um, so it just becomes another thing, okay? Even if he looks like he's doing great with it, continue to do it, okay? okay? Um, let me think here. Questions about any of this stuff? No, pretty, no, I'm, I'm understanding it so far. If you would like to see what this would look like, okay? Because I think seeing and understanding is a very big part of this. Mm -hmm. Is if you go to my YouTube channel, um, we have a playlist hey. and uh, there's a dog, her name is Lucy. I believe she's the only Lucy we have currently. Okay. She's a pit. Okay. Um, Lucy is a fear aggressive dog, but she is way worse than this guy here. Okay. Okay. And you'll see what I mean by putting her under pressure. Um, so you'll see them lessons one, two, three, four, five, six, so on and so forth. Okay. And the first lesson, I think we just did the healing stuff and you see where she's growling and trying to lunge at me. And by the end of class, I'm like walking around, she doesn't care. And I think it's class two or three, I start putting pressure on her by touching her. Okay. And that's where things get dicey, okay? And it's just a, a, a process, but more, after each class, she's able to take on more pressure, okay? okay? Now the hardest- which, which is how training works. Correct. We should always build off of where we picked yeah. up the last, we'll build, pick up off of what we've had uh, left at last. Uh, the hardest part here is, is the veterinary, vet visits, okay? Um, I've had cases where we put, put them under pressure and they're great with the vet. I've had cases where we put them under pressure and they suck at the vet. Don't really know how it's going to work out yeah. because a lot of it also has to do with your vet. Because if they come in like, hey, buddy, how are you feeling today? Right? Yeah. Doing that high pitch stuff and he's like, I really don't like you now mm -hmm. because of the high pitch stuff, you know? Or they don't know how to handle dogs correctly. A uh, good way, like I use, I use um, police a lot in, as references in my training. Mm -hmm. So like, Typically with the dog, when they go ballistic, it's like four vet techs pinning the dog down. Mm -hmm. And then they try and like get the medicine in or whatever, and yeah. the dog's freaking out. Yeah. And they're putting too much force on the dog that the dog panics. Mm -hmm. Excessive force in, in police, right, uh, work. Uh, if you have too many policemen to one person and they start to panic, you get all that buck back, mm -hmm. right? It's the same concept here. So I, with, my, with Lucy actually, was showing them like, this is the best way to try to approach the situation. 
um, so that the vet can give her the shots and everything because they have to yeah. sedate her, okay? Yeah. So I've also gone out on vet visits. I have no problem going out to the vet and everything. As I long as still, Rockford, so. I've been out to Rockford before. Okay. I, mean, I was actually earlier an hour and a 15 minutes southwest with okay. the crazy case that I have right now. Um, I have no issue going out to help a client with that stuff okay. as long as the vet will allow yeah. Because sometimes they're just like, no, like it's just the owner, blah, 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 blah. Well, the, the vet that, that I use um, is the guy who's been our police dog vets for ever. Oh, sure. And so he's, yeah, they're good with just about anything. But lately, I've not been seeing him. I've been seeing his, his assistants or sure. his, the other doctors. And sure. So. The main thing is, if I go, is showing you how to handle your dog so that they can do what they need to do, yeah. okay? To keep him as at ease as possible, mm -hmm. okay? Because he trusts you, mm -hmm. he does not trust them, yeah. okay? And obviously it's the doctor, the vet, whatever, so he's had, in his mind, negative experience with the negative yeah. experience. Yeah. So all that stuff factors in, even yeah. though for you, you're just like, bud, you're just getting your shots, yeah. right? Uh, but yeah, I'm more than happy, happy to help with that as well. Okay. That would most likely be more like in a nine class range if that's something you're thinking about yeah. towards the end of the program. Uh, as long as they're willing to have me in and come in and help you. I understand that they're a business and they're trying to get dogs, they have to check dogs and all that stuff. Um, and then we can't just spend an hour yeah. in there. But I help, I can help streamline things as much as possible. Yeah. And then I'm educating you so that therefore the next time you go back, yeah. it should be much easier, yeah. okay? Um, let me think here. Other questions? Okay. Um, nothing out there ordinary. I mean, I see this stuff all the time. I don't see a lot of mouths. Don't see a lot of Dutch Shepherds. Don't see a lot. Of, I see a lot. Actually, no, I see a lot of German Shepherds. Yeah. I get those all the time. Um, but these more protection working type breeds, not a whole lot of. Yeah. Uh, so the only thing that really differentiates them is like the fact that he's a male. <laughs> People always ask me, well, what's a male and all? Well, it's like a German Shepherd that's in smoking crap. Yeah. That's what I say. You know, he has two speeds, fast and dead. So that's, that's the way he does it really. Yeah. So. So we'll he's, see if we can. He's slowing down a bit. He's, he's starting to get some age on him. So, but. Um, yeah, we'll see if we can help tone him down a bit more. Get him okay. to be more of a passive thinking dog as opposed okay. to like, a, like, he didn't do too bad today. Like everything I'm seeing here is is why I don't feel as if he's he's that bad. Mm -hmm. You know, because I get people where it's like, yeah, we got to tuck away, you know, because the dog's just like yeah. every little thing. The client I have actually actually after you is in that okay. in that realm. So yeah, you can check out Lucy's video. Okay. I think that'll help give you an idea of like how that would progress. Sure. Now they did a different program. They did a behavior program, which is they paid for training that's for the lifetime of their dog, so to speak. Okay. So I gave them like, I told them like 16 classes or so is where I think I, I need to get this resolved. Mm -hmm. um, but then down the line, if something happens, if they need more training to fix something or get something back on track, they don't pay more money. I just come in and go, okay, we need to do a few classes, yeah. put things together. Um, I don't think you're in that that range. Uh, I think you're more in like a kind of set time frame. So six at minimum, okay. nine is an, a nice kind of, we got time to work on a, a number okay. of things. Okay. And then 12 is just if you want as much as possible. So I can do six and then add three on if need be? You can, but you would pay two different rates. Okay. So like, let's say six is a thousand and I think three is like 550. You'd end up paying 1550. Okay. As opposed to if you commit to nine, you up front, you get 13, it's like 1375. Okay. So it's cheaper per class because right up front you're saying, yeah. I want this many. Yeah. We do that to make my calendar easier yeah. well, because- no, I, I work by a calendar now too. Yeah, so people are booking, so we're, we're keeping it going. Yeah. And then there might be there might be a delay. So if somebody books your time after you, because we're thinking you're doing yeah. six, yeah. Uh, and then you're like, hey, I'd like to extend my program, but like, we're gonna have to switch the time now because we've already booked yeah. somebody for that time, okay. okay? I don't care how you approach it. It's personal preference, uh, but at minimum six, okay? okay? Um, other questions? you do most of the stuff here or? Correct, so what we could do, so you're coming from Rockford, you said? Yeah. Okay, uh, we can meet at my facility, I'm right off the expressway. Okay. I'm on Diversity and uh, Western. Okay. Um, if we're wanting to work outside, uh, there's, a, there's a park by me called Palmer Square. Okay. Um, that's off the expressway and it's more, it's west of here, so you don't have to come as far east. Okay. okay? A little bit quieter too, so if you'd like to have a quiet space to work from. There's still people, so we're still getting some of this. Yeah. It's just not like, this is not even the busiest it gets. Yeah. It's busier. I would freak out. I, I've never seen this many people in the park. We, never, we don't get that in Rockford. Oh, sure, yeah. No, no it's just nothing. No, it's just, yeah. And, but 
and and I don't know why because when I grew up, that's where we always were. You know. Sure. So. Yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, we can meet in my facility. I have a 13,000 square foot space, okay. plenty of space to work with. We can do the heel, we can do the, the touch okay. stuff. Um, that's not an issue. You just let Maria know. Okay. Um, and if we need to do anything out in Rockford, uh, we, so like a lot of my clients do classes here or at my mm-hmm. facility. And then if they need to do like a one-off in-home for whatever reason, it's just like a $50 upcharge. But because you're in Rockford, there'd be a travel fee as well. Okay. Um, otherwise, um, it shouldn't be an issue. Okay. okay? Uh, other questions? Okay, so Maria will reach out to you. Okay. Uh, please give her about a five to seven business day turnaround. Sure. Just because you booked your consultation, and since then there have been other requests, and then we've got people that are already had theirs that are booking, and then. I'm a, yeah. cal- I'm a counselor, I'm a mental health counselor now. Sure. I did 21 years in the police department, went back, got my master's, and I do mental health counseling. And that's what I have to tell my clients. It's like, look, your first, your next client, or your, your next session after the first one might be a month, but then. After that, you're. But then, book them out you know book four or five of them out because we fill up yeah yeah for sure same way and with us what we do is recurring schedule so like if you pick like a friday at six o'clock that was open if that was open uh friday six o'clock for whatever program length you pick is your time okay okay so if you did six you get seven weeks that six o'clock on friday is your time because mm-hmm. uh we give everybody one extra week just in, you know people get sick and all that stuff okay. you got to cancel uh but then after you used up what we call your priority then it's okay we have to book other people after that sure. time frame yeah. you don't lose the classes we yeah. just might have to change the time in, in yeah. which we meet okay okay all right um anything else thank you Jesse. Okay. it was a pleasure sir um any questions feel free to ask maria if okay. it pertains to me she'll ask me and i'll turn around and shoot her an email okay uh otherwise she'll get in contact with you if you know what you're you're kind of set on like if you know you want to do six or whatever mm-hmm. you could just email her and say hey maria i'd want nine classes um here's my availability and this way, when, when it comes to uh, when you're next up in line, she already has the information. Okay. Then it's just send you the contract and stuff, and then she can handle everything else. Sure. Okay? okay? It was Great. a pleasure, sir. Uh, if you need anything else, let us know. Otherwise, uh, feel free to take a look at all our videos and okay. stuff and get a feel for it. Okay? Right. Thank you. Thank you.